My name is Eric Newman. I'm the founder and chief play officer of Rock Solid Foundation. Rock Solid loves and serves kids fighting cancer and the reason that it's pediatric cancer is because I had cancer at three years old. And ever since three years old, I've been trying to figure out the pain that I went through, trying to extract the purpose from that. My hair coming back in and already. And my dad's hair not coming back. We had just bought a new house. We had just bought a new Jeep and so Life was good, he'd been promoted, I'd been promoted, everything was good. We were on a wave of success. And then we went to the doctor and then within a week, our whole life was changed. It was just turned upside down. Well, it started out as a very normal day. Um, we got up and I had to take him for his three-year-old physical. Dr. Cox said, come here, boy. I'm from the old school, let me fill your stomach. And so he put him up and he kept filling and filling and filling. And finally he said, his liver's enlarged. Has any of the other pediatricians mentioned that? He said, well, I really think it's nothing, but I have to have it checked out. Dr. Bird saw us for the first time. She examined him and she said, there's something there. We need to admit him. We had scans and x-rays and blood work done, and that was on a Monday. And on Wednesday, they decided to have to do surgery. He was in surgery for about seven hours. Well, we were in denial. So once we were admitted to the hospital, I knew something was there, but I was thinking assist. I was not thinking the C word. The nurse came out, I'll never forget. I looked at her right in the eyes and I said, is it cancer? And she looked at me with tears in her eyes and she said, the doctor will be out to talk with you shortly. And so then we knew. I don't know exactly how many years later, but I was second child, three years old when I was diagnosed. And then my dad's sister, second child, three years old, her name's Shannon, and she was diagnosed with leukemia at three. And then a couple years later, my dad's brother, second child, was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. I remember walking down the stairs and my grandparents like getting into the limo and burying my five-year-old cousin. After graduating high school, then I started a lawn care company and then I was going back and forth to some like a community college and I remember getting a phone call and my mom told me that Shannon's leukemia had come back with a vengeance. So, the day she was laid to rest, I remember I argued with God in that moment. I was like, he made a mistake. Like, I should have been the one that died, not Shannon. And I remember I was just pissed. And I always grew up, like, growing up, like, oh, God doesn't make mistakes. I was like, well, he did on this one. That was probably the last day for about 12 years that cancer ever came out of my lips. Um, I swore to throw it away, and I, I honestly did feel like it was coming back to get me. Started the lawn care company, did fairly well with that. Then I started a construction company, did really good with that. 2008 happened, and that was like, they deem it like one of the worst economies since the Great Depression. And I ended up losing everything. And when I say everything, it's like a country song. I lost my girl, lost my trucks. Um, I had to move back in with my mom and dad. Went to my bank and saw how much I had in my bank account. And I had close to 1,500, give or take. Um, cashed in, went to one of the grocery stores and dumped all my change into one of the bins. And I cashed out and I went to Costa Rica. So went to Costa Rica, did some surfing, some traveling the country. And it was a night, I don't remember how long I had been there, probably like two weeks. And I was in a hammock. I mean, I could hear the ocean and I had never felt so alone in my entire life. Like I was like, there's got to be more than this. So I reached under my hammock 
grabbed the journal out. This time I just opened to the center of the page of the journal. It's almost like putting my hand to the pad and it just came out like hope. That's it. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And I would just like, I would circle it and then I would try to write something else. And it's like, nah, this is it. Don't, there is nothing else. I was like, nah, that's not right. So I would, every day I would come back and circle it. That was the only thing I wrote in that journal. I, I wanted to write and articulate what like I was feeling and I just couldn't. I was angry, but I had this little word. I love to tell you like I hopped on an airplane, came right home, but that was not the case. I ran out of money. Uh, my mommy and daddy had to fly me home. And so one of my buddies knew that I was a cancer survivor because I grew up with him. And he was like, hey man, have you ever thought about throwing a fundraiser for the local children's hospital? I was like, no. Because I, I was strict to like, it was all about me. Through an event, we raised close to $7,000 for the local children's hospital. By doing that, they also, the hospital, found out I was a childhood cancer survivor and asked me to come present a check. I was sitting there waiting my turn. I see a little kid coming around the corner, run, like running fast. Attached to him was the IV pole. And attached to the IV pole was the mama bear, running as fast as she could to keep up with him. Kid was bald as a cue ball. Then this kid, lo and behold, I'm like, please don't stop, please don't stop, please don't stop. Right in front of me. He's like, what are you doing? I don't have a badge on, probably in flip flops. And so the mom could tell that I wasn't with everybody else. She's like, who are you? And why are you sitting right here? And I, I remember looking at her and for the first time, I just started telling her my story of having cancer. I looked just like this kid. And I just, I kept talking. It's like I was saying all this stuff. I have no idea what I'm saying, but I felt a breath of fresh air for the very first time in a very, very long time. But it didn't come out as pain. And that was the part I didn't understand. And she looked at me and she said, the thing is it changed my life forever. You give me and my husband hope that my son will be sitting in your seat one day. In that moment, everything changed. That word hope, just like it just kept ringing and ringing. By the end of that conversation, I left the second floor of that hospital, got to my car. I couldn't breathe. I was sobbing. And when I say like ugly, like sobbing. And I get in there and then this moment, like it wasn't huge transformation, but I felt a building block. Well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to take my pain and it's now gonna become my purpose. And in that moment, everything changed. I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew that there was a family walking into something that I had a little nugget that it would almost be disrespectful if I didn't do something. Now, what that something was, I don't know. I was completely broke. Um, I'd been painting houses. I'd been pouring concrete any type of small construction jobs I could get my hand on. One of my good buddies, Keith, called me up. I'd have been doing some odds and end jobs for him and he called me up and asked if I would build a place at. I brought my dad with me because he was free labor. Um, I needed the money. Two and a half hours in, I'm like, I quit. And my dad was like, you can't quit. I'm like, yes, I can, watch me. And he said, look in the window. And as soon as I looked over into the window, I saw this little girl. All I saw was her nose and her eyes and a little blonde hair on top. My dad was like, she's been there the entire time. And as I'm anchoring it down, I'm like, I will never build another place out of my life. This little girl bust out the back door, grabs me, like grabs my leg. And she says, thank you for letting me play. And when she said that, I looked at my dad. I was like, I think I'm supposed to build play sets for kids fighting cancer. What I found is the more that I talked about me having cancer and wanting to do something with 
my experience, I started noticing that people wanted to be a part of something bigger than themselves. We ended up raising close to $3,500 to build this play set for this beautiful little girl. The day of the pre-build, that was Friday, I woke up and it was pouring down rain. And I wanted, I was like, all right, this is my excuse to quit because I was petrified. In that moment, I looked out and I saw all these people. There's about 30 people. They showed up pouring down rain for one common thing to build a play set for a beautiful little girl, Jillian Jeske. Well, a local nonprofit surprises a Portsmouth child fighting leukemia with a brand new playground this afternoon. Four-year-old Jillian gladly goes down on her brand new slide, as you can see right there. The group Rock Solid Foundation met Jillian and her family last year, and they started hitting the streets, selling donuts and collecting money for Jillian's place. Rock Solid Foundation tells us that this was their first family that they've helped, but they hope to bring joy to many more children who are fighting cancer. The first three that we built were three little girls that we built for, and it rained torrential downpours every single time. But the same people kept showing up. The three things that we had, we had beer, pizza, and t-shirts. And it changed the world. I saw this very similar situation to what it was at the hospital. There's bald little boy at a run walk thing and I see this little boy run past me and follow this little kid and it happened to be Jackson Benson I look at his mom Jessica and I ask her I'm like can we build your son a place up? and she says okay they just had so much energy and passion for building this place at in our backyard and I just, it kind of felt like we had like won the lottery or something. I didn't realize when we came in the backyard there would be so many people there. I mean, we had invited people, but just seeing all the blue shirts in the, in the backyard was pretty cool. But he like took a couple steps and paused and like looked at the playground and then he just took off for it. And I remember on Jackson's build, it grabbed the monkey bars and I was like, oh, we gotta grab him. But Jessica said, no, you don't. And that kid just hung there. And I knew that there was something special about that kid. The playset was amazing. The playset was something that was just for Jackson and met him where he was in his treatment. It was a sign of hope for us that we could have a normal life one day that he would be outside playing and we wouldn't have chemo or radiation or a central line or uh, or any of that. I think it can give them something to look forward to because you don't want to look at what's happening going on thinking about the pain that it's causing you. You want to be able to look forward and have something to play on and that you know is going to be there for you. I think it was very stressful and they didn't know if they were going to have their first firstborn kids stay alive and if they were going to be able to see them graduate and be able to see the basic life that a kid would have. Kids are still kids so play was a big thing whether in bed or when you're feeling more well in your own backyard. I asked my mom what's the one thing she remembered on the day I was diagnosed? She didn't want to talk about it. No, like, I don't blame her, right? No mom wants to go back there intentionally, right? You try to block some of that stuff out. And she told me, she's like, she was tapping on the desk. She's like, you know what? I remember that our world was flipped upside down, but your dad had to leave me to go get my clothes in a bag. And he forgot half of the stuff that I needed. And I looked at her, I was like, well, what if we could eradicate that moment from the face of this earth? What if we provided a bag for kids fighting cancer that the hospitals could give them when that news happened? We were able to build for a little guy named Brian. I was able to go to the hospital to meet him. We never forget because it was my daughter's birthday. It was in April 28, 2015. But I remember, you know, when the doctor, you know, explained me and they gave me the diagnostic. And I feel so bad, believe me. I broke my heart. 
Ryan's mom kept saying this over and over, and I don't remember the exact phrase, but when they translated it for me, it's like, people don't do stuff like this for us. Rock Solid Foundation, they give me a little bag with the most important parents they need in the hospital because they have all the stuff you can stay, you know, in the hospital. Everything, they come in the bag. You can open it and you can use it. And you can spend more time with the kid because you don't spend your time, you know, go to the store. No, you can get everything from there. You can find whatever you need is there. When Brian, he received, you know, that place it, he play every single day and he smile. He enjoyed the park. We built for him, we got put into remission. They ended up one way or another, they switched location where they were living and then he relapsed again. And I call Eric and I say, Eric, I moved to different house. Can I move the part? And he say, no. <laughs> Brian, he need another part. And believe me, he had a second opportunity for Rock Solid Foundation. He be exciting. And then about nine months later, the mom called me. I was sitting down for a video shoot. And I was mic'd up and my phone just kept blowing up. I answered it and he's like, I need you to come pray for my baby. Took the mic off, walked out, and I was able to go with this family. I was able to pray for this family. But it's very, it's very hard to see your baby go back to the hospital. But oh, I, I want to say, I never be alone. I have a great family there. And Moz, you know, I say thank you to Eric because he was a great person in my life. Nine months later, my man ended up losing the battle to cancer. He was hermoso el hijo que Dios me regaló por nueve años. Y pues le doy gracias a Dios porque fue lo mejor que Dios me dio. We were able to get through all of that darkness of cancer by just building a play set. But it also showed that we cared. And it's, and I say it all the time, but it's bigger than a play set. Brian Guevara fue un niño muy guerrero y sobre todo fue un niño muy feliz. Gracias a la fundación Rock Solid, que es la palabra, porque es, significa una gran familia. Una familia que hizo sonreír a mi hijo y a todos los niños que están en los hospitales con dolor y gracias a la fundación que dan parques para niños, les ayuda demasiado a no sentir dolor, a sentir simplemente la alegría de sentirse felices. Y gracias a todos ustedes por darnos la felicidad de todos los padres de ser feliz y ver feliz a nuestros hijos. A nombre de Brian, gracias a todos y gracias Rock Solid. Enjoy your kid, enjoy your family, enjoy everything. It's hard, you know, when you're fighting a lot and you sometimes you lose. But I never lost because Brian, he went. You know, the most important is um, lovely. Everybody love. It doesn't matter if you feel pain, no. Continue and be strong. I think where Rock Solid Foundation is now, we're still extremely focused on that moment in time, changing the way that families live with cancer. Uh, we're building play sets all over the United States. We've launched new programs. Our ready bags are in hospitals all over the United States. And I think that we still have the same mentality of like, we would drain the bank account for one single family if we have to. Rock Solid Foundation, we've scratched and clawed for so many years just to survive. And I remember a family that we built for, their nephew was diagnosed on the West Coast. And they asked if I could provide him a playset and, 
in uh, Oregon. We had the money, but I got scared of losing everything. And by the time that I was able to like overcome that fear, I was like, yeah, we're gonna build them a place. Up. I decided like, we're gonna do it. I don't know how, but we're gonna figure it out. And I make the phone call and the little guy had passed away a couple weeks before. The next time someone asked me to do it, to build a playset, I'm just gonna say yes. The power is in the decision, right? To make the decision to do it. I said, if you're gonna do this, it needs to be for every child. And we have been chasing like to not say no. And it's allowed us to be creative. It's allowed us to stay extremely curious on how we can push the envelope because cancer doesn't care, that's what we're called to do. Every year on average, 16,000 kids are diagnosed with pediatric cancer and we're not gonna stop until all of those families have the opportunity to play. All of those families feel hope in the community that Rock Solid brings. The power is in the community and the power is in the people that come together and so Rock Solid can come in and build these play sets, but the community is the ones that really rally around them. And it's the community that's really built Rock Solid Foundation from the ground up. It's the people that are the first in and they're the last to leave. And I think that's what makes Rock Solid Foundation unique, is that we put it back into the hands of the community to do what they know how to do by you all helping us provide the gift of play. That allows us to tell the story of these kids fighting cancer.